Hi, this is Eric with the California Climbing School. I'd like to show you a number of different ways to equalize two bolts into an anchor. And we're going to try it with a pair of quick draws, a pair of single length runners, a double length runner, and finally a cordelette. So first of all, you'll see that I've taken care of my safety. I'm tied into the end of the rope. I am clove fitched into a locker onto the rings. And we're going to try first off with some quick draws. So anytime you clip a carabiner into a bolt hanger, you don't want to clip it on top of the rappel hardware because as you can see, the carabiner gets tweaked and levered over that rappel hardware. So we want to lift the chain or the ring or the quick link up and clip underneath. Okay. Now when you're orienting your quick draws, you want to have your carabiners facing the opposite direction. So you see these lower carabiners are facing the same direction. I'm not as concerned about which direction these face, but these two could both open on the same rock feature, okay, because they face the same way. So we want to make them reversed and opposed. So if we clip one quick draw the other way, that'll flip this carabiner around. Now they are reversed and opposed, and you can see how they make an X when the two gates cross over each other, okay. So we're going to talk about the Rene principle when we build an anchor. So that's R-E-N-E, -E, redundant, equalized, and no extension. So in this case, we have redundancy because if one quick draw breaks, we have the other one. And it's equalized if we pull in that direction. However, in this case, the direction pull is this way. So you can see this quick draw is not taking any load. So it's not equalized, so this isn't going to work in this case. But a lot of times it does work, so it's real fast and convenient, common at sport climbing areas. So is there extension? Well, let's see, if one bolt were to fail, would the master point right here extend down? No, it just swings over to the left a little bit, and there's no extension which creates shock loading. So we've got three out of the four. Now let's take a look at a couple single length runners similar idea. So we can go ahead and take some lockers if we have them. It's always preferable to use lockers, especially for your master point. And you clip one coming in from the right and the other one coming in from the left and then flip them over, lock them down. And it's important, I think, to have the carabiners with the large side down. Okay. That way the rope gets to spread out and it's easy to pull the rope through. Um, it's, it's not as hard on the rope. This way the rope's getting smushed. And then the other problem is that your carabiners want to unscrew themselves when they're oriented this way. Okay, so we'll flip them over and you, you notice you have to screw them down. So screw them down so you don't screw up. And we've got reverse and oppose. You can see the X. All right. And is this Rene? Well, it depends which direction we pull. If we pull this way, yes it is. If we pull that way, it isn't. If we pull this way, it isn't. So it's only equalized for one direction of pull. So it may or may not work depending on if the bolts are the same height and which way you're pulling. Um, is it redundant? Sure, if this side fails, we've got this side. Is there extension? No, one side could fail and then the master point stays right there. It doesn't extend down and shock load. So this can work, nice and simple. Let's take a look at how to use a double length sling a couple different ways, and maybe a way not to. So here's our double length sling, or double length runner. And first of all, let's talk about the improper ways. So this is a triangle rig, and we never want to rig a triangle rig, okay? because when you rig a triangle like this, it uh, multiplies the force on each bolt, okay? Now, if you pull the middle down like this, carefully making sure that your bar tack doesn't get jammed against the carabiner because that weakens the stitching. So keep the bar tack maybe an inch away from one carabiner, pull the middle down. Now we've got a V configuration, so it does not multiply the forces on each bolt, okay? So this is much stronger, the V, than having the triangle. However, big, big drawback to the V, you never want to build an anchor like this because look, if one side fails, you're going to lose the whole anchor. It's just going to slip right through. Okay. So instead 
of the triangle or the V, what we want to do a lot of times is just pre-equalize it, figure out the direction of pull. Let's say it's pulling towards my waist right here. We'll pinch it and then tie an overhand knot or a figure eight knot. So here's your overhand, okay? Could I tie a figure eight? Sure. As long as it doesn't make the angle too wide. If I pinch it here, it makes the angle too wide. We want to keep that angle at less than 60 degrees. So let's not pinch it too high and see if we can get enough for an eight. The eights are easier to untie after you've fallen on it. There we go. And don't worry if that knot's a little bit messy, not a problem. Get our master point carabiners reversed and opposed. And we'll look at Renee. So is it redundant? Sure, the knot isolates both sides, okay? So if this side cuts on a sharp edge, we still have this side, okay? And there's two loops to clip into at the master point. So one could cut, the other remains. Two carabiners at the bottom. Is it equalized? Yeah, for the one direction. So that's why we call it a pre-equalized anchor. Um, it does not self-equalize. Sometimes it's nice to have a sliding anchor that self-equalizes. You can see how this is only equalized right here and not off to the side, okay? Um, but it is Rene. There's no extension. Look, if one piece pulls, master point just swings over a little bit to the side. Doesn't extend down, okay? So that's probably my favorite way to build an anchor off of two bolts. It's real fast, easy. Now, if you want something that self-equalizes, because you are gonna be pulling from various directions, then we can do a sliding X with limiting knots. So we're gonna measure down to about here, which is where our mass point is gonna be, and we're gonna tie a limiting knot on either side. Let me show you why, okay? If you clip it like this, the V, we talked about how that is certain depth if one side fails. So a solution could be, this is an old fashioned solution to twist one side. It's um, called a sliding X and it's, it's a lot better than the V because look, if one side fails, we're still connected to the other side. So that's huge. But you did have that extension, ah, bam, creating shock loading. So if you want to eliminate the potential for shock loading, then what you do is you tie a limiting knot on either side, one here and one here. So we'll tie an overhand on a bite there, another overhand on a bite on this side, and then we can just adjust where the knots are so that they're both about maybe four to six inches from the master point. And then of course we don't want to clip like this, that's a V, right? We want to make sure we clip by twisting one strand, reverse and oppose carabiners. And is it Renee? Well, let's see if one side pulls. Yep, okay, it's still connected. So it is redundant, right? Either one of these could fail and we have the other one, okay? It's equalized in multiple directions and there's uh, no extension because we have the limiting knots that prevent the extension, okay? The only downside to this is it's easy to make the mistake of clipping in the wrong way into the V configuration. So make sure you never clip in incorrectly, all right? And these knots are a little bit tougher to untie after you've fallen on them, okay? Now, let's take a look at equalizing with a cordelette. So I've got a seven mil here. It's about 16 feet long. A lot of people like a 20 footer. So a variety of different lengths you'll see out there. And we can extend the master point down lower. Okay, so we wanna keep the knot close to a carabiner at the top, but not jammed up into the carabiner. And we'll pull down the middle and pre-equalize it for our direction of pull. Let's say it's that direction. Let's try a figure eight because that'll be easier to untie than the overhand, and there we go, okay? So, very nice system right there. Fast and redundant, equalized, and no extension. All right, I hope this was helpful. Safe climbing.